Greetings and welcome back folks. You all know how much I love the gamma function. And of course, because of that, I love the beta function because it gives me an excuse to invoke the gamma function. And I have used various integral forms of the beta function in previous videos. And the three forms that I usually invoke are the three forms that are well known to most people about the beta function. The first one being the beta function with complex arguments u and v equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the u minus 1 times 1 minus x to the v minus 1 dx. Another form is beta u and v equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. And I think this is the one I've invoked most. That is x to the u minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to the u plus v dx. And then there's the, there's the third really cool version, that is beta of u and v equal to twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the 2u minus 1 of x times cosine to the 2v minus 1 of x dx. But this is another version, another integral version of the beta function that's less common and doesn't really come up that often. It came up in a previous solution development. I think it was an integral I evaluated a couple of days back. And I think I actually proved this version as a side quest in a previous video. But of course, it deserves its own place in the proofs playlist. So this is what we're trying to prove today. And our starting point will be, well, you could start off with any one of these three integrals, but I'm going to adopt this one here because the solution development is quite smooth. So we have beta of u and v equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the u minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to the u plus v dx. So I'm going to split this integral into one integral from 0 to 1 and then another from 1 to infinity of x to the u minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to, terribly sorry about that, to the u plus v dx. So this is just going to, this is something that we're going to carry along with us throughout the solution development, throughout the proof that is. And we're going to play around with this integral here. First up, notice that we have an integral from 1 to infinity. And when we have such integrals, I really enjoy invoking the transformation that is x to 1 by x. So by that token, we have beta of u and v equal to that integral from 0 to 1 plus this integral from 1 to 0 now. And of course, dx gets taken to negative 1 by x squared dx. So we have integral 1 to 0 of what exactly? So this is x to the negative 1. So that would be x to the 1 minus u divided by 1 plus 1 over x to the u plus v times this negative 1 by x squared dx. And of course, we can get rid of the negative sign by switching up the limits of integration. So we have an integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 0 to 1 again of x to the 1 minus u times x to the negative 2 divided by x plus 1 divided by x to the u plus v. And it looks like we're going to get some nice simplifications out of this thing. So we have integral 0 to 1 plus integral 0 to 1 x to the negative 1 minus u dx divided by 1 plus x to the u plus v divided by x to the u plus v. And what next? What's next? Well, you guessed it. We're going to expand by this term here. So multiplying the numerator and denominator by x to the u plus v, we have the integral from 0 to 1 plus another integral from 0 to 1 of x to the u plus v minus 1 minus u on multiplication with the x term up top, dx divided by 1 plus x to the u plus v. Okay, cool. So that means we have the cancellation of u terms and we're left with x to the v minus 1. And of course, recall that the integral from 0 to 1 was the integral of x to the u minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to the u plus v dx plus the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the v minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to the u plus v 
dx. And there we go. We have the proof. All we have to do now is combine the two integrals and we have beta of u and v equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the u minus 1 plus x to the v minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to the u plus v dx. Now you all know how much I love Euler's reflection formula for the gamma function. So let's make use of this integral form for the beta function to derive another integral form for Euler's reflection formula. So the first thing we need is the relationship between the beta and the gamma functions. So we have beta of u and v equal to, terribly sorry about that, gamma u times gamma v divided by gamma u plus v. And the reflection formula is, of course, gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equal to pi divided by the sine of pi times z. Okay, cool. So that means... All we need is u equal to z and v equal to 1 minus z. And with these values, u plus v is going to be equal to 1, which is, of course, quite convenient. So we have beta z and 1 minus z equal to gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the z minus 1 plus x to the 1 minus z minus 1. So we have x to the negative z left behind divided by 1 plus x dx and this thing of course should equal pi divided by the sine of pi times z and of course this is a math for fun channel so you guys know how i like creating over the top looking integrals so if we let z here equal to i then negative z would be negative i which is of course 1 over i so x to the 1 by i would be the ith root of x. So that means we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the i minus 1 plus the ith root of x divided by 1 plus x dx, which is an integrand which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, but it looks cool, and that's why we do stuff here on the channel. Divide equals pi divided by the sine of pi times i. Now, we know from complex analysis that sine of iz equals i times the hyperbolic sine, or sinh of z. So that means the integral results in an imaginary number. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the i minus 1 plus the ith root of x. And I'm just, I just can't stop chuckling a little bit or laughing a little bit as I'm writing that dx equal to pi divided by i so 1 over i is of course negative i so we have negative i pi divided by the hyperbolic sine of pi <laughs> wow that is that is an interesting looking result and of course we could clean up this result a little bit and by clean it up i mean we could expand using x to the z so in that case we would have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2z minus 1 plus 1 divided by, terribly sorry about that, x to the z times 1 plus x dx equal to pi divided by the sine of pi times z. And don't forget the roots of this thing. That's gamma z times 1 minus z. And I do like this form. This looks dope, but I prefer this one for practical reason. And by practical reasons, I mean, again, we do math here for fun, for fun. So a lot of times we're going to need to differentiate under the integral sign. And it would be a lot easier differentiating this thing with respect to the z parameter instead of, you know, applying the quotient rule to an integrand like this. So yeah, that's why I prefer this thing for practical reasons. And speaking of differentiating under the integral sign, you could try that and derive an interesting integral form for the reflection formula for the digamma function. So give that a shot and let me know what you got in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.